this afternoon, like millions of others around the world, we looked up in the sky this afternoon to watch the moon eclipse the sun and all the spectacular things that were a result of that. What a joy it was. And while the cameras were rolling, we had those dark glasses on and we had a dark lens on the camera. I took a few moments to share what the Bible has to say about stars, the heavens and the earth that God created. As you continue to watch this video, I pray that the message that God put in the stars and in the heavens will become plain and clear to you. May God give you understanding as you watch. We're out this afternoon enjoying the solar eclipse where the moon passes in front of the sun and we'll see its shadow encroaching. Although it's a very long distance away, you can see uh, the moon coming into and blocking the sun. Thought I'd read a little bit about what the Bible says and share a few thoughts with you on the stars and the planets that God created for our enjoyment. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Nobody's ever written a sentence that is more filled with meaning for the purpose of our existence upon the planet. Verse 14, we read, God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs, for seasons, for days, and for years. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. We know what seasons and days and years are. From the very beginning of time, man has learned how to create sundials and solar readers uh, like Stonehenge, and I've seen them all over the world so that we know where the summer solstice is and where the equinoxes are. It helps us plan the agricultural season. God put these up there for us, but he also, this word signs. So what are the signs? We believe it's the collection, what has come to be called the constellations, 12 of them, and their associated deacons that declare the message of God written in the storms. Psalms 19 says, heavens declare the glory of God. We'll talk about that in just a few moments. Before God made Adam and Eve, he made the stars. And before Adam and Eve named all of the animals, God named all of the stars. He determined the number of the stars and he gives all of them their names. We read in Psalm 147 verse 4. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. That's how we know God named all of the stars. What a tremendous statement. Before Adam and Eve fell, God wrote his plan of salvation in what I've already referred to as these 12 constellations. God must have shared with Adam and Eve the names of these stars, at least some of them, and then passed that knowledge on to their descendants down to Noah and from him to his sons. Well, Job, who lived long before Abraham, clearly had celestial knowledge, amazing knowledge, this is what he wrote in Job 38, verse 31 and 32. Can you bind the chains of Pleiades or loose the cords of Orion? Can you lead forth the Mazareth in their season? Can you guide the bear with its children? The bear is the big dipper. Job 38, 31 and 32. How did Job know about all of these things to write about them? These uh, 12 constellations, nobody knows who came up with the idea. There's no person who's attributed to naming them. I believe the original source was God. God's uh, wonderful information is always perverted. And so God's astronomy became corrupted into astrology. And so this word that Job used, who can lead forth the Maseroth? That is the line in which these constellations appear in astrology, or it's called the zodiac and the signs of the zodiac, but just think of the sign as a line. We read in Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies display his craftsmanship, day to day continues to speak, and night after night they make him known. They speak without sound or word, their voice is never heard, yet their message has gone through all of the earth. Now that word message is the word line. And within two or three degrees of this line around the globe, uh, God has placed these constellations to speak to us. Let me go back and just talk a little bit about astronomy and astrology. 
So we, I've introduced you now to the word Maseroth, found in Job chapter 38. Let me introduce you to another word called Mazalot, M-A-Z-A-L-O-T, found in 2 Kings 23 verses 4 and 5. And it is worshiping the sun, moon, and stars, and this is astrology. It's a practice of worshiping Baal, and it is an abomination to God. So let me draw a contrast for you between astrology and astronomy. Astronomy is the study of stars, while astrology involves worshiping the stars. In astrology, people think their fate is controlled by the stars. In astronomy, the stars point to the one who created the stars and controls our destiny. In astrology, people think their personality is determined by the stars. In astronomy, our character is shaped by the one who created the heavens and the earth and all the stars. In astrology, people look to the stars to learn their story. In astronomy, we look to the stars to tell his story. Now, in astrology, the annual year begins with Aries and ends with Pisces. But in biblical astronomy, we believe it begins with Virgo and ends with Leo. Uh, Leo is the lion and Virgo, of course, is the Virgin Mary. And so the story of salvation is told in these 12 constellations, how God sent his son through the Virgin Mary and how he is coming back as the lion, the ruling lion. What a glorious thought that is. Just over a year ago, I was in Egypt, way up the Nile, and up there is a temple, a temple to Dendera. And there's a, a zodiac, there's a signs of all these astrologies. And in between Leo and Virgo is the Sphinx, which means connector. And so the Sphinx is connecting the story. It tells us where to begin the story. It begins with uh, Virgo, uh, and then it ends with Leo. Returning to Psalm 19, Psalm 19 verse 1 through 6 declares the revelation God has made in the stars, while verses 7 through 14 declare the revelation that God has made in his word. And we're so grateful for his word. The Lord, the instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commandments of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, everlasting. The law of the Lord is true, each one is fair, more desirable than gold and much fine gold, sweeter than the drippings of honeycomb. And so uh, let's uh, look to the stars and the one who made them to speak to us, to reveal to us the Creator, and then to reveal to us uh, how we live through the Word of God. Isaiah had a lot to say about stars when people were asking Isaiah, Isaiah is filled with questions, and God said, who, who can you compare me to? And so God gives Isaiah this question to ask the people, lift up your eyes on high and see, look to the stars. People all over the world are looking to the stars uh, this afternoon and today, but the question is, who created these? He who brings out the host by number, calling them all by name and by his greatness and might and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. We want to be looking at more than the sun this afternoon. We want to be looking at the Son of God. And he is, uh, as Isaiah said, the one who has lifted up. We lift him up. Yeah, maybe you have friends who read horoscopes. We strongly advise against reading horoscopes. The Bible knows more than any horoscope could ever come up with or dream of. Look to Him. Look to Him for salvation. Are you watching the stream and you've never heard this message? We encourage you. Receive Jesus as your Savior. As you're looking up today, one day we'll look up and Jesus is coming back. Will you be ready to meet Jesus when He returns? We hope that you will. This afternoon, many people looked up into the sun to see a message in the stars as that moon passed by it. But one day, Jesus will return. The Bible says, all eyes will be upon him as he returns. I trust you are ready for the return of Jesus. But the message in the stars has spoken to you today. If you've never received Jesus as your savior, 
We urge you to do that today before it's too late when Jesus comes back. Thank him for dying for you and your place on the cross. Thank you for the message that he gave us. So clearly, heavens declare the glory of God. Receive his glory in the person of Jesus. Thank him for dying for you and your place on the cross. Ask him to forgive you for all of your sins and make you his child. As you're watching this afternoon, you need a healing. We release a healing word to you as we close this broadcast. <clears throat> Ears be open, eyes be open. Cancer go in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, touch people with diabetes, heart conditions. God is touching people right now and healing them. You receive Jesus as your Savior or were healed while listening to this video. Write to me and let me know what God has done for you.